This is the story of a bricked Kobo Wi-Fi and how I was able to resurrect it. Now, I'm not going to give you full details, but I will show you take a part on it. As far as the software, the image, and all that goes, I'll explain what I did and where I got uh, what I did to fix it. But, um, I'll take it out of its case. This was uh, Patty's mother's years ago. She never really used it. It's got an e-ink display. It's one of the early uh, e-ink displays. It's not really that good. What did I have this for? Well, since she didn't use it anymore, by the way, it's got a frilly purple, you know, background there. We'll turn it on. There we are. And in a moment it should clear. And go and boot up. I found out this actually runs Linux behind the scenes, probably as most of these actually do. You do have to wait for it to boot up from a, you know, completely shut down state. You could leave it in sleep mode. And because e-ink displays are extraordinarily um, power efficient, you don't really have to worry about that. So here's just a sample book I have on it, just to show you what it actually can do. Okay, I'll give you a close-up of that, just so you can actually see the, the quality of the screen. It, that's just the... Uh, the first page and then it goes into the book. It's very slow. I hit the button, you wait. I can't go that way, I'll try that way. You wait, and there it goes, hit the button, wait. Hit the button, wait. You can turn the page in a regular book faster. So not the greatest device out there that ever was made, but I got it, it was in working condition, and then it crapped out on me, and uh, it had a, there was a forced update on it with the Wi-Fi, and um, after that happened, it just didn't work anymore, it wouldn't boot up anymore, it wouldn't do anything. I keep it for, oh, one more, documents. And you can see I have a whole bunch on here of different things. Uh, just to pick something at random. Um, we'll go to the Brookstone Towel Warmer. These are all PDF files. I wanted it because I knew it would read PDFs. Now the problem here is that the fine text, I'll see if I can get to a page that has fine text on it is kind of hard to read and that just was the quality of this screen that's just how it was basically but anyway one day it just totally crapped out on me and uh, after it did that update and then it was just totally dead so I did a little research on it and what we're gonna do now is power it down it says it's powered off so I said, well, I got nothing to lose, so I got to open it. Now, first off, this is just such an old device that it actually uses a mini USB rather than a micro USB. First step in taking this apart is to remove the bezel. Here's the way I do it. Other people may do it differently. You must use due caution, be very careful, and just pry very, very gently. No tools required as far as I'm concerned because I can do it with my bare hands. You do need a little bit in the way of fingernails to do this. If you go like this, okay, you can lift, I don't know if you can see how you can lift the uh, bezel there. Now I'm just going to turn it this way so I actually have better access. Of course I've already fixed it so I'm taking it apart just for the YouTubes. You just pry up like that and work your fingers around. Now when you get to this part, because it's so thick, there's a tendency for that to crack and break. So we'll get to that later. In this case we're going to work, turn it around and we're going to work the top part. Put my thumb in here, okay, to pry up like that, because this edge is already up, up top. So we'll just keep prying very carefully and very slowly. Just work your fingers down. You see how I'm just riding down in the groove there, like that, and it pops open. Now when you get to areas like this, you might want to use extra fingernails and a thumbnail or something to pop that, pop that, and now we'll come here, you see it's getting stuck 
right by the port. Pry a little more. Pry a little more. That doesn't want to go, so we'll try from the other side now. We'll go back here. Pop that, pop that. And just keep working the way. And the bezel is free. That's all there is to it. Fortunately, Kobo was very kind to us as far as repair of this unit, provided you can get the software that you need. And again, I will get to that later on. <clears throat> Just to show you the inside here, this obviously is the battery, the D-pad or directional pad. They're just little buttons on a circuit board there. And the screen, of course, just like that. There's four screws that you need to take out. Here, 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 and here. So again, here, 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 and here. So let's go ahead and take those screws out. Uh, you could disconnect the battery from it, but that's not really uh, a big part of my concern at this very moment. Unscrew that. Two more to go. And obviously, in case you're not aware, the e-ink displays will remain displaying whatever they last did display, even without power, which is why it still shows that it might actually work. But obviously, that's not the way it does actually work. And now, pretty much, you just kind of get your fingernails in there. Sometimes a flat blade screwdriver will help you. Pop this up. Now, we're worried about the little port here. I don't know if you can see right in there. So you got to like bend the plastic ever so slightly and rock the board so you get that free. And that comes out. And now I can flip it upside down. I'll let you look at the circuit board and I will explain something in the interim. Uh, I had called Kobo, which is now owned by Rakuten.com uh, it's called Rakuten Kobo or some crap like that. And while they did talk to me on the phone, uh, they were utterly useless. They had no clue what in the hell was going on. They had no clue why it was happening. And they also had absolutely not a chance of a clue at trying to fix it. They tried to tell me to download Adobe Digital Rights Management some crap to put PDFs on it. I said, no, the fucking book for it says you just plug it in and copy files right to the root of it, and it's done. The Kobo will do the rest. It'll arc, uh, not archive them, but put them in the folders or whatever, however it goes, and that's that. So uh, basically what we have here, I don't know what these chips are, nor do I have a magnifying glass to read them. You got a big chip here, some other ancillary chips here. Uh, the wireless is probably that chip, I'm going to guess. Um, power button is right here. The four buttons on the side there. And an SD card slot. Uh, this is for extra storage. Although I do understand, I don't know exactly what you have to hold down and press to do it. Um, you can hold something down and turn it on and it will boot from that. But, like I said, Kobo was actually very kind to us. If you look very closely, take a look right there. That's a micro SD card. It pulls right out, just like that, and it's actually a SanDisk 2 gig card. All of these have that white dot in the center, I don't know why. Uh, while the card is out, that holds the operating system uh, some sort of recovery partition, which you're not going to be able to access when it craps out. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. And, uh, uh, of course, any books or documents or anything like that that you have on there. If I go and try to turn it on now, so you get the screen so you can see it, we'll hit the power button. The blue light turns on. Yeah, yeah, it's bricked. So what happened to mine? Uh, well, I don't know exactly. It just fucked up somewhere along the line. I had put stuff on it. It was good for a while and then crapped out. I just powered it down. Uh, it was good for a while and just crapped out. When I would plug it into the computer, it would not 
see it as a removable drive or anything like that. So I couldn't copy anything to it or do anything with it. Uh, one other little ancillary thing. This is the connection for the screen right here. Be careful with that. Don't break any of this stuff because you're going to need that kind. So what did I do? Well, uh, I went to a, uh, I did a lot of, lot of research on it, and I found a forum called mobilread.com. That's M-O-B-I-L-E-R-E-A-D.com. There was a wonderful gentleman on that board that uh, goes by the name David Ford, D-A-V-I-D-F-O-R. David Ford, if you happen to watch this video, I want to thank you very kindly for sending me the image. Uh, David Four has the images for practically all these Kobos. I don't know where he has them. He puts them up on Google Drive, sends you a private message, hush hush, you download it. Then of course you need a micro SD reader. You can get an adapter to a standard SD and of course a reader that'll read these and uh, plug it into your computer using two other pieces of software which allow you to, uh, well actually one other piece of software which allows you to write an image directly to the card. I did that, popped it in the Kobo, and powered it on, and it worked. That's all there was to it. So let's reassemble. We will test it, of course, before we go and put everything back together, because then I'd have to take everything apart, and then we'd be looking at an XJO81X length video, and we don't want that. So we'll go and power that on, blue light, and it clears, and it starts booting up. You got the seven squares come up, they disappear, they come up again, the blue light flashes, all that kind of great stuff. Should go away one more time. Blue light stops flashing and it will return us to where we once were. We'll power it down and reassemble. Powered off. Okay. So this is basically the reverse, and it's also pretty easy of taking it apart. You have to slide the board in here. Now you'll notice there's a notch right here on the board that goes around this screw hole. It has to go underneath this metal bracket. So it's a little bit of a game here, because you have to slide that in, sort of, kind of get it hooked, and then you have to get the USB port down into its hole where it sticks through. So that requires a little bending of the plastic. Sometimes you have to lift the board back up and out slightly, bend it just a little bit, and eventually it will slide back in. Once you do that, just press everything down. Make sure the wires for the battery are not going to get caught in the bezel or anywhere else. We'll put in the four screws now. And this is actually pretty simple for a guy like me who can't see as well as he used to. You'll find that out when you get older, in case you haven't already. <laughs> so we'll put those together. And third screw and the fourth screw. Bezel is pretty easy. Uh, you just sort of stick it back on, kind of, get it into position. Obviously that's not because it's sticking out. Just line it up. And you sort of just press down now. So we're just going to press all the way around. We'll go up the other side now. Just like that. Snap that, snap that, snap that, and we're back together. And no one will ever know. Just like that, all back and brand new. Oh, we got one more clip right there. Power it back on. And we'll just show that indeed it does boot up. We'll go back into the same document that was on there. I put all of the 
documents for any of the appliances and things like that in the house. The washing machines, dishwashers, garage door opener, any of these oldie gadgets I have or any other kitchen gadgets, stuff like that. I have all of those different uh, PDFs on here. And you'll see it'll come right back into the book. And you can scroll through and look at this. Of course, this is not the most ideal reader for a PDF. Um, because the screen is well lackluster. Uh, in addition to that, uh, it's limited in terms of its zoom capabilities and it's slow. So if I hit menu, you can go down to display, select that, wait, it comes up with that and you can blow up to up to 200%. Click on that and it does get bigger and easier to read. But then, of course, you do have to scroll all over Hell's Half Acre just to read it. And with the slow page turning and stuff like that, it does not make for a very nice and enticing experience. But nonetheless, it's there. Just another little repository for all those, even though they're obviously on the computer. Sometimes it's nice to be able to see in here, press and hold this button while tapping the other button six times to make some China magic happen in the China Metronics and stuff to program things and whatnot. So that's really the main reason because, uh, like I said, uh, this was in non it was in disuse actually. And uh, I figured I could make it uh, useful once again. So we'll power it down. That's going to be it for this one. Uh, make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. By the way, this was all done absolutely in real time with no cuts whatsoever. Thank you very much for watching.